Welcome to another DaVinci Resolve Tips and Tricks episode. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use and share with you the most powerful free DCTL that ever was, Tetra. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to do something that I'm sure you've asked yourself and couldn't find an easy answer to it. I'm going to start with some theory, so if you want, you can skip directly to the demo, but I recommend you stay. The time codes are in the description if you wish to skip this part. Let's dive in. Tetra, short for Tetrahedral, is a free DCTL that came to the attention of the Colorist Society after Steve Yedling, the DOP of films such as Looper, Star Wars, Knives Out and Glass Onion, showcased his famous display prep demo, where he basically says that any good camera that captures enough information can be mapped or prepped to look exactly like film of anything you want to, it have to be film. He prefers film. <laughs> I leave the link for his one hour long presentation video that is a must watch for any colorist or any DP who is interested in color grading too. Originally developed for Nuke by Calvin Silly and later moved to Fusion by Ember Light VFX and of course used by Steve Yedling in his prep demo, Tetra is a very powerful tool and its name derives from what it does, that it's basically color transformations using tetrahedral interpolation. This lovely animation shows uh, what I mean by tetrahedral interpolation. We could also call it color warping by means of tetrahedral divisions of the RGB color cube. This graphic is an excerpt of uh, Juan Jose Lopez Salazar's papers, which, well, I know, you just want to push knobs, slices and wheels to make things look pretty. So let's leave all these things for the beautiful geeks that some of us are. So let me put it in this way. These six tetrahedra remap the entire color cube by warping the colors without affecting the grayscale distribution of the image. It does give you more freedom than a 3x3 three three matrix, which is often used for color space transformations, CSTs, and camera matching tools. So let's now just jump into the fun part. This is a great example for what I'm, I'm going to showcase. This is a beautiful ad we shot for Suzuki called Good Different. Um, it's on YouTube, so if you put Suzuki Good Different, you can watch it on YouTube. It was shot with an Alexa Mini LF and some beautiful signature primes, like Ari signature primes. And, and well, it, as you can see, a terrific production design, so it all looked very beautiful. As usual, I'm using my beautiful fixed null tree. Um, in the input, we have Alexa Loxy 3. This was shot, as I said, on an Alexa with Loxy 3. Uh, at clip level, I did some basic uh, corrections. It was shot, taking care of not overexposing highlights and whites, as there's a lot of white. And in post, you know, everything gets lifted up. Not only highlights, but the mids uh, quite a lot. So it becomes a really nice, soft look. And then at the timeline level, or in this case, the group post clip level, just because in the timeline, I have several different clips for different tutorials, clips. So I have clips of, you know, our, well, this Ari, Ari Raw as well. I have FX6s, I have Canon cameras. So different things that I'm going to be showing you soon from different shows. I can probably, yes, this is on Netflix right now. Um, but let's concentrate on this one and only shot that will exemplify what I want to show you very well. Anyway, so, so, so I was saying that this is, I usually show things at the timeline level, but I put this in a group post clip because I have different cameras, different clips on, on this time. And I'm gonna, I'm creating tutorials, but just think about shows where you group uh, your scenes because they have very distinctive different looks. So you may have an overall look at the timeline level, um, but then you do some tweaks at the group post clip because it belongs to that, that single gr group where timeline is for the whole of your timeline. So if you have bought or you're planning to buy my fixed node tree, this what we where you see in here, it looks slightly, let me open it up, it looks slightly different, but it's the same thing in its core. This middle part is packed with the, the CTLs that I bought, so I can't offer them for free, of course, but in essence, they do similar things that what I offer my fixed node tree. Now for the Tetra DCTL, 
in case you don't know how to install it, uh, please watch my density DCTL video. It's for the paid version of DaVinci, it's an OFX. So you just bring the effects and then you have a lot of a drop down where you have all your DCTLs, which I have quite a few. Um, in this case, we're talking about Tetra, which is free. I'm giving it to you. It's in my shop, take for free. And it's one of the most powerful things out there. So here, this is how it looks. Let me just go big. So you have a nice image here and the effect here. I just press Shift F. So obviously red, green and blue primaries and the subtractive primaries, cyan, magenta, and yellow. So we have red, green, and blue, which are your primary colors, RGB, cyan, magenta, and yellow, which are the primary subtractive. And then we have uh, three white slices here, which I think is the best way to understand this plugin. So in this case, I'm gonna introduce red to the white. Uh, if you grab here the numbers instead, yeah? So I'm gonna push red just point 0.1 that, that it's enough before and after before and after i'm introducing red but it's not that the whole mass of the image is going towards red so you can see that i'm introducing red primarily to the white and then yeah it's bleeding into the rest right as, as an example let me reset this just look at the vector scope if we were to move the offset slider the whole mass of the image moves uniformly, yeah? There's no color that is anchoring to its original position. That is why the offset wheel is great to remove a cast or to use it for white balancing because it's the whole image moving towards, towards one of these quadrants, whether it's warmer, whether it's cooler, greener, or more magenta. It's the whole image as a whole but everything moves uniformly. Where on Tetra, let me add some reds. You know, some of the colors are anchored. You know, they still retain the, that value. And then you, of course, as much as you push, everything moves. But that's it, it's not uniformly. It's just crashing their own reds. And same to the other side, you know, these red here are slightly retained. So I'll do the same with the greens. And I'll do the same with the blues. And you can see how you know, the colors are slightly anchored, which is which is good. Now let's start thinking about combinations. Yeah. So let's let's say I like to add to the white a color that is not red, green, or blue. How do we do it? Well, we do it by mixing, just like an artist does their colors on a palette. They put a bit of you know, paint, a bit of this, a bit of that, and they use a brush to mix colors until, you know, they see the color they, they created and then start painting. We tend to think about moving knobs and sliders and, and, you know, and wheels and making beautiful images, but I think it's a must knowing basic theory so we know what we're doing when we're doing something. So that being said, let's add yellow to the white. So how do we do it? We have two ways to do this. The first one is by mixing red and green, right? So red and green, so two vectors will give you the one in the middle, but mixing red and green, it will give you yellow. So let's add equal amounts of red and green to the white. So let's do 0.15 red, Can you see the mass moving towards red, and 0.15 of green, so equal measures, the image moves towards yellow. So we're adding yellows to the white by mixing, aka adding. We have discussed in previous videos uh, what additive saturation does to your image. I'm, I'm just, you know, the luminance is changing. I'm adding, everything is getting brighter. So let's grab still of this so we can compare it. So what, what's the other technique then? The opposite, which is subtractive. And as I talked about in my saturation video and also in my density video, we need to subtract the opposite. So what's the opposite of yellow? It's blue. So by removing blue, we should be adding yellow, right? So let's use the same value, so minus 0.15. So, so let's compare, this is the subtract, subtractive method and this is the additive method. So yeah, you can see that we're not amping, if you will, the, the luminance. So in this case, we found that for 
you know, for, for a color like white that is already the brightest part of the image, the subtractive method tends to work better. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's different styles, um, but we're not changing the luminance of the image by saturating or introducing a color into a different color. Okay, so, so let, let's do one more trick with the red. So let's take the red to orange. Again, we have the additive and subtractive way. So which is the additive way is this. So you have the vector, which is red and green. So mixing this will give you something close to what's in the middle. And then, you know, if you mix it perfectly, it should give you yellow. But if you add more of, of you know, of one or the other, you can push it more towards a yellow green or more towards orange. So let's go a bit heavy handed with red as it's a more opaque color than, than white, just 0.5. So you can see how this red is getting getting more saturated only the the red channel okay so as i said we have red in the red channel so if we add green we'll get closer to yellow and, and orange you can see in the vector scope how that red moves and let's just look it there in the orange let's make it round to 0.5 so you can see um it's a fairly light orange and then as we know what subtractive does it should be a bit more potent you know denser so let's take a look so what do i need to subtract to get a yellow color and subtract blue right which is the, the opposite vector so if we su subtract blue and, and let's go the same value minus 0.5 i'll get an orange and if we keep going a little bit more i get a brighter orange than what we had before a deeper if you will denser let's let's grab steel of this let's compare it and let's do 0.5 of green which is this would be the additive and let's go with the subtractive yeah much potent so additive subtractive yeah different methods so we need to think this slightly different to what we did before we white as i said before we're mixing colors so we are creating yellow additive or subtractive to the red right so we're mixing yellow with red and that will give us an orange color so so yeah so so far additive and subtractive we see how to mix the colors let me give you a trick if you want to make a specific color within tetra denser let's grab still grab red you have to um minus equally all the three channels so let's say minus one for red it becomes desaturated basically we're desaturating that channel but then within the red we're desaturating the green so green the opposite is magenta and what's the opposite of blue as we said yellow so equally we're moving these three colors i'm seeing these three colors of the red channel and the red becomes denser before and after Yes, I, I went very heavy handed. You could have done easily 0.5 and you can copy paste numbers so it's quicker, so you don't have to type. And yeah, and with just minus five, the colors are become the reds are becoming denser and just the reds. So that's a little trick how to add density to one color channel. Lovely. So you can play with this DCTL until your heart's content. This is an amazing tool to create professional look development. So let me show you this last thing that I, I was referring at the start of the video. Let's take a look at the tools in DaVinci, right? So let's say the wheels, right? So these wheels correspond to the vector scope. Yeah, we have magenta here. We have reds, we have orange, we have yellows, we have greens, light, you know, green, lighter greens, we have cyan, we have teals, we have blue. Uh, we have pink, we have magenta, and we have red, and in the center we have white. So my question here, let me go full, is is there any intuitive way to make the color brown within the Vinci Resolve? Or just, just to be, you know, one that is not a primary. We have the vector scope wheel uh, with primaries, but to create the rest of colors that are not in here. So we have to mix, right? We have to mix up. The colors so i think tetra is a very good way of mixing colors to create new palettes or well just new colors for you so this way to create brown on reds would be to push to orange and then desaturate 
the orange and darken the orange until it becomes brown, right? So something like let, let's let's dial some numbers here. Like yeah, so this mix created some sort of brown in the reds. What if you know? Let's let's grab an example. It's just the opposite. Red. We have cyan. How do I make this cyan brown? Right? What do I have to do to make this car brown? Have you ever seen a brown car? Probably old cars. You know, they're just horrible. I don't know why to make a brown car, but we can because we have Tetra. So I'm gonna add a bit of red to the cyan. I'm gonna reduce just a tiny bit of green to the cyan. It becomes magenta. And the last touch, and the most important, the blue. Just re let's remove the blue. And voila, it became brown. So, free DCTL for you. It's been around for a while, but it's as strong as always. I'd like for you to take away thinking more like a painter when you're going to develop your looks. And what I'm offering here is your palette, a big one, with all the paint in the world um, you need to mix and create and new colors just to taste. So I think this is plenty for you to take away and play with this DCTL until you get used to it. Trust me, it's easier than a 3x3 matrix, but at least for me. On that page, until next time, and happy grading.